Is that when you started asking questions once you learned more about the civilian role? Towards my end in law enforcement, I started getting discouraged with it, yes. That's when I started quitting. But when you're younger and you're trying to achieve and you've got all the fancy jewelry on and all the badge and the car with all the nice decals and lights, you're disillusioned by a lot of different things once reality is. And just the way law enforcement has changed a lot, it's changing a lot. How has it changed? How people perceive law enforcement is more of an occupying army than somebody that's there to be part of that community and help that community. Like I said before in the prior interview, that before people knew the law enforcement officer that patrolled their neighborhood or could go down to the city police department and ask for help, where now it's more of a you're making trouble for yourself by going to report a crime or just the perception that people have of law enforcement. Now, don't get me wrong, there's some great cops out there, some of the best, and they're still there doing the job, and there's no one coming up there doing the job. But for the most part, it's treated like an occupying army. You're seeing a lot more of the training of putting distance between yourself and the people you're trying to protect. The new rules of engagement, an us-against-them mentality. Peace officers are defenders of the people. You bring them a hot cup of coffee, a slice of pie. They help you get the cat out of the tree. That was the old days, before they became the military and then merged with the military. That's before they started patrolling our streets and running our country. That's before the Second Amendment was under attack and, frankly, almost gone. That was before the government started shipping in the heroin and the cocaine to create the societal crises. That was before black helicopter raids in late 2001 on St. Louis. Don't believe us? Call somebody who lives in St. Louis. Of course, then there's the Department of the Army document they gave us back in 99 on the side of the highway at a military checkpoint where they say, give us a call, local police departments. We'll serve search warrants on your citizens' homes. We'll shoot them. Well, our response area is in 77 counties. We're responsible for 77 counties here in, in Texas. Oh, really? So if a local PD needs support, they'll call us. You're saying, you're saying there's some people here that we're not allowed to film. Right. There's some people here that we would ask that, uh, well, hang on a second. Why, why would you want that on camera? Well, because we want to expose the secret police. We want to expose how you're working with the military, how you're running checkpoints on I-35 in Central Texas. And it's going on in Iowa. It's going on in Tennessee. The gun confiscations, the SWAT team raids, the fake attacks like this one. On Saturday, May 12th, at approximately 8.50, an explosive device went off in the Bell County Annex in the 500 block of East 2nd Street in Belton. The Belton Police Department responded to that, as well as the Belton Fire Department and the Belton EMS. The Belton Police Department is currently investigating the cause of the explosion. The explosion took place on the east end of the building, causing several casualties and injuries. The police department has secured the scene and requested assistance from the Fort Hood Delta team in a psychological warfare program against the people of Central Texas. The whole attack was fake, but they told the public it was real. Again, all part of merging the military and the police. That's my truck right there. That's good. Get back over there, get clearance to go back third. Did, uh, were you at this scene in Temple? No, Mike was. I was. Mike was. Yeah. So he put me on the internet. No, I didn't. Who put me on the internet? Well, we put it on. Do you have a problem with that? Yes, I do. Well, it's not me because I don't. I don't do anything. We put it on TV, and then yeah, it's been on TV. Okay, because there were pictures on the internet, and somebody put them on there without my permission. My, you know, my face. You got to contact whoever did it. Yeah, but that's news. But you're public. You're public. Yeah, it's news gathering. Yeah, once you're in public. Once you're in public, I could turn the camera on right now and say, "Hey, I'm gonna put you on TV." The scary part was, just for asking questions, the police and military were angry at us. We were bad. We weren't going along with creating hysteria. 20 EMS workers have been, or rather uh, DPS workers, have gone on ambulances to area hospitals. Some of them have been treated and released now. The rest are in stable condition. EMS tells us another five drove themselves to area hospitals, and then they checked out about 161 people here on the scene. In 2000 alone in Austin, Texas, there were eight separate fake bio attacks. They even had a fake nuclear spill and shut down I-35 and called out the National Guard. A couple weeks later, they quietly announced, oh, it was just a drill. But you should have seen the psychosomatic response of the people. Suddenly, hospitals would be jam-packed. The population was buying it.
We're going to fight the New World Order. Hello, Waffen SS. Get it on. I got it. Get the search lines. Yahoo, my friend. Yahoo! We all thought this couldn't happen here. It was only Russia or Nazi Germany. But incrementally, they trained us to accept it. Now we have to learn to say no and get in their face. We have dignity. We're human beings. Government's taken over in a parasitic fashion. Did you ever think you'd see the government talking about torture and lauding the virtues of it? Well, now it's actually happening in hundreds of publications. And if you're not for torture, you're with Al-Qaeda. Why, even phony liberals like Alan Dershowitz have been publicly peddling it, telling us it's time for us to reassess our laws and accept torture. But for the terrorists, of course. But the evidence shows that we are now the terrorists. They talk about using cattle prods and rubber hoses on people. And who's going to do the torturing? FEMA, the Ministry of Love. And that's the Federal Emergency Management Administration. All those years we warned people about FEMA. You can read the federal documents. Roundup plans, concentration camps, people laughed at us. Then came Seattle. They put 500 of the peaceful demonstrators in a FEMA camp, the Sand Point FEMA camp. We woke up one morning in Austin, Texas, and found a concentration camp on our own backyard. How, how did they fix it up? Uh, well, uh, Travis County came out here and uh, with uh, some inmates... And they cleaned it all up, swept it, uh, pulled weeds, and then they got inside and uh, reinforced the um, well, um, the uh, doors and stuff, with uh, bars and stuff. Did you hear about the chains in the floor with the bolts? No, I sure haven't. They announced it on the news. They threw it in our face. The U.S. Army, FEMA, out of an old 747 hangar, bolts and chains in the floor, troops marching around. Armored vehicles, porta potties, stacks of cods, long before the September 11th attack. They were going to take good care of us. But of course, after the attack, even the Washington Times reported George Bush enacted 500 dormant legal clauses, provisions allowing censorship and martial law, force roundups. Then they have the model a state's health law where they're allowed to put us in sports stadiums or aircraft hangars and, quote, shoot old women if ordered to do so. The Model State Emergency Health Powers Act. Most of the 50 states are now passing it as we make this film. And it is a Adolf Hitler wish list. They talk about how to deal with the millions of dead bodies, how they're going to round us up, how to herd us into compact cities, how to use slave labor at the different federal camps, and how they've already been doing it uh, since 1989 at 12 different Army bases. They just got done classifying that, by the way. You can go to the Army's website and read about it. You see, a lot of things have been going on in the country you didn't hear about. They were busy building FEMA camps and getting you ready to go into them. And then they've got bills like H.R. 2977 where they talk about different mind control systems they have, different ultra-low frequency mind control devices that can make you become sick or even kill you or make you do what's required of you. 2977, an actual federal document, an actual federal bill admitting that they're spraying chemical and biological weapons on us through the use of something called chemical trails that they're adding to jet fuel, especially in military aircraft. And then if you go to law enforcement catalogs like Shomer Tech, the biggest law enforcement military catalog out there in the world, they have the sonic nausea system, the supersonic nausea system, where they brag that police have been using this for years to manipulate and stop political speeches. It can make a whole crowd get sick, and they can't even hear it. Then ABC News reported the Kokomo hum, an entire town of people becoming ill from the ultra-low frequency attack on a mass scale. Now let's see how they're indoctrinating our children. Soviet style. You can give information without having to give your name. If you guys have all the information that I need. You guys can get paid for good tips anywhere from up to $200.